Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Cynthia Tulin Wilson, and I'm here uh, on my show, Author to Author, with Ivan Arthur. And he uh, has written a very interesting book called Pavement Prayers. How are you today, Ivan? Oh, I'm fine. I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to be uh, speaking with you. Same here. Mm -hmm. And from the other side of the world, you're, you're in India? Yes, is that I'm right? In India. Yeah. In, in, and, in, a, in a city called Mumbai. Mm -hmm. One's called Bombay. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. In yeah, fact, uh, I slip into Bombay uh, more <laughs> often than Mumbai. Ah, <laughs> you know? uh, sure. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, okay, so would you like to start us with a prayer and then we'll talk about this book? Okay, a very short prayer. Mm -hmm. I'll pray to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come be with, the, with Cynthia and me as we talk about my book, Pavement Prayers. With your guidance, we pray that this session be a blessing for all those listening and for us as well. This we ask in all humility, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, so this is um, the second interview I believe we've had. Yes. And uh, I enjoyed. The first one was on, on uh, in fact, the first one was on the uh, sequel to the book we are talking about today. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's good to know. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So uh, what led you to start this whole process, you know, writing the first and then the second Oh, uh, well, the, I'm, we're talking now about the book that I wrote first, which is Pavement Prayers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I, um, I started writing Pavement Prayers uh, a little after I retired, mm -hmm. which was in 2002. In fact, I had been um, right. I was in advertising. I had been writing for brands for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. But of course, I did other writing as well including mm -hmm. uh, a book, uh, the, the formal book on, on the visit of Pope John Paul II to India. The book oh. was called The 14 Stations, uh, mm -hmm. like the way of the cross. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, so, uh, well, after that, uh, I mean, I retired in 2002. And after my retirement, I had more time to do uh, writing, to, you know, more writing and that's when I started Pavement Prayers. Uh, you'll ask why Pavement Prayers? Why Pavement Prayers? Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, we were living in a commercially busy part of Mumbai uh, called Churchgate. It had uh, broad streets and equally broad pavements, which, of course, you in America call sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Uh, I found those pavements very exciting. In fact, pavements have always fascinated me, whether they were the sidewalks, sidewalk cafes in uh, Europe mm -hmm. or the buskers of New York and Chicago uh, pavements. And then, of course, it brought to mind the pavement of Pontius Pilate, where Christ was condemned and scourged. And in a way, that pavement of Pontius Pilate where Jesus was scourged, I see as a metaphor for the pavements of Mumbai, mm -hmm. where Jesus is being condemned and scourged every day. Mm -hmm. uh, it's that kind of, uh, in fact, the pavements of Bombay, are rich in story, and that's why I sort of picked just one patch of that pavement to, uh, you know, for my story. 
Mm-hmm. In fact, Mumbai's pavements are 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 really fascinating. I can I sh- share some sketches of the pavements I've done. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So okay, I've got uh, I, I you know the pavements fascinated me so much that I uh, actually I, I I I sat down and I sketched a few few scenes from the pavements which I thought I'd share with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mumbai's pavements are, are, in a way, probably the, the city's largest department store. You uh-huh. can, on the pavements of Bombay, you can get anything from food to furniture to clothes and, um, and household appliances, anything you want. I mean, you can uh-huh. also have a mini circus performed for you on the pavements in, of Mumbai. Mm-hmm. I mean, I once found uh, I found somebody selling. Uh, I found a guy selling musical instruments, including a big double bass on the pavement. So, Mumbai's pavements are really fast. It's a it's a big department store. You can you can buy almost anything you want on the pavements of Mumbai. Mm-hmm. Uh, all that, of course, is illegal, and uh, you have the municipality with eyes wide uh, shut. Um, and uh, all this happens uh, on on Mumbai's pavements, and it's and people love it. Mm-hmm. it Mumbai's pavements are also perhaps the largest uh, housing colony in the city, housing oh. ten, tens of thousands of uh, of families. Uh, I'm on on I've seen generations of families uh, living on the same part of the pav- pavement for years in my in my uh, office i mean in, in, in the building below the building of my office building when i joined that the office in 1964 i saw a couple a young couple move on the pavements there it took took a little uh, small area of that apartment of that uh, of the pavement, placed uh, their trunk with all their belongings, mm-hmm. the stove to to cook their food, and they started living there. They they lived there, had children, they had grandchildren there. When I left in two thousand and four, I, I I saw three generations of that family mm-hmm. under one patch of pavement. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it's it's. Uh, Quite, quite unbelievable. Yeah, uh, I mean that pavement is kitchen, bathroom, beauty parlor, anything, everything they do, they mm-hmm. they, they they do on the pavements. It's mm-hmm. their home. It's their workplace. It's everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, in fact, it's their workplace. They earn their living there. Shining shoes. I mean, lending their muscles for day labor, mm-hmm. or they set up maybe stalls serving tea and snacks. Mm-hmm. So there is money to be made even uh, on the pavements, and they do that. Mm-hmm. But the most remunerative form of work is begging. Sure. And uh, it's a, it's it's a diabolically clever form of begging. They, it's a designed kind of beggary. In the 1970s, for stimulus, they would have uh, beggars with, with their limbs disfigured, either sawn mm-hmm. off or disfigured at birth. And um, that was a stimulus. In, in the 1990s and after that, we had, we had the family. Mm-hmm. Uh, the picture of the family, a kind of uh, uh, pastiche of, uh, of the great master's family paintings. So mm-hmm. you, you'd probably have the pavement Madonna like this. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. with, you know, uh, ostensibly trying to feed a child, but, um, you know, it, it's, it's more than that. Mm-hmm. And uh, their begging was... Uh, strategically very clever i mean they would they would go to 
you know, maybe go to stop cars that were stalled at the uh, uh, at the um, uh, signals at the mm -hmm. stop signals. Sure. And they had captive audience there, so they, you know, that was very clever. Or sometimes mm -hmm. they would, they would, you know, guilt as stimulus. They would go and stand next to the to the man selling chickpea. Mm -hmm. where a rich man would, you know, people would come pay 50 rupees for a, for a handful of uh, chickpeas, which they would throw to the birds. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, they would, the stimulus would be guilt. If you can feed the birds, that 50 yeah. rupees would, could buy me two, two meals for the day. So, mm -hmm. so it, the, the, the pavement is really very, uh, very, very uh, rich in, in story. And therefore, I selected the pavement as, as a background, as a kind of uh, material for, the, for, for my book. Mm -hmm. But besides these people, there were others uh, driven out of their street, out of, driven out into the streets by unfortunate circumstances. Mm -hmm. We, my wife and I, met a number of them uh, and we, we met and we spoke to a lot of them. I took down notes, I, I, I sketched uh, a lot of them. Uh, one of them was this, this lady called Grace, who, was, mm -hmm. who, who, was, you know, who lived on the streets, but on Sundays she would come to our church uh, and just stand outside the church. And I would wonder what a prayer would be. And uh, in that, sort of try to write down the kind of prayer that Grace would say. But in pavement prayers, I didn't have Grace. I sort of, uh, uh, I, I sort of introduced John. And John was sort of built with uh, men who I'd seen before. I mean, I'd met before. Uh, one of one of them, I'm in fact, I met. I, I saw when I was about five or six years old, I saw uh, a man fallen in the gutters at the side of the road, uh, unconscious. And we all thought he was drunk. But when you went there, he said, I'm not drunk, I'm hungry. And so mm -hmm. we got him something to eat. And when we, when we looked at his, his bag, his bag had... Uh, a whole lot of beautiful pictures which he had drawn. He was an artist in search of a job. Mm -hmm. And I've based my, my, my John, who's part, who, the, my praying protagonist in the book, I've based uh, that John on, on that man that I saw when I was six years old. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's, how I, uh, that, that's how it started. So any, any questions that you have? No, I'm just really impressed with your artwork. It really gets the points across. You know, even though you're not really, I mean, even this John of the Cross, it's like when you look at, you can see desperation, even though you can't see his face. Yeah. The artwork is excellent. In fact, I've, I've put, I've, I've sort of, uh, I've included a lot of the, uh, of the sketches in the book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. There's just a few of them. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, yeah, any, any more questions? So um, I'm not really that familiar um, with your country. So is it sounds like the, the streets are full of people who are desperate to some extent. Is that correct? Yes. It is. Yeah. I mean, so the, the, most of the pavements are, are most of the sidewalks, uh, you know, have uh, homeless people uh, yeah. living there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beggars mainly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, India is a very, pro it's a world power. Um, so, I guess, is there no middle class? Is that? Oh, there's a big middle class. You know, okay. I'm, talking, I'm talking only of Mumbai, of okay. this city. This city, oh, okay. you know, this city is such 
uh, it, it's, 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 it's like, um, you know, you have uh, Dick Whittington's wanting to come to London, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a kind of uh, come to Mumbai and get rich. So you have people uh, coming from all over the country. They, mm -hmm. come to, they come to Mumbai, they find that there's no place to stay. I mean, it's uh, houses, ho housing is very, very expensive. So mm -hmm. many of them set up, you know, they set homes in the, on the pavements. On, yeah. And um, some of them move out of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them do well. Some, some of them uh, eventually find housing. Mm -hmm. But thousands, tens of thousands are on, are on the streets. You won't find that in the place I live in, which is in Goa. Mm -hmm. You won't find this in other cities. No. Uh, some of them maybe in, in Calcutta, a few in Delhi and the big cities, but Mumbai is full of mm. them. I see. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, um, we have uh, many homeless here uh, in all of our cities, but I don't actually think I've ever seen someone who is living on the street. They may have been living on the street, but they wouldn't have set up like this is where we live. But um, places like New York City, you know, uh, some parts of Boston, even Springfield, uh, Springfield, Mass, which is only about two hours from us. You can see just, you know, that's the way I describe it. You can see in their eyes the desperation, oh, yeah. you know. And so it's a world problem, but it's it's so sad. I don't I don't know why we can't all get together and do something about it, but that's what, what is, yeah. <laughs> what's diabolical about it in Mumbai is that it is it has been designed by perhaps some very clever people who um, who are in fact exploiting these these beggars. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, the story goes that you can actually buy a beggar. I oh. can buy a beggar. I mean, I could sort of pay a certain uh, hundred rupees for a beggar. And uh, I shared his earnings, which may be more than the hundred rupees I paid for him. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's such an organized kind of industry. It's a huge industry in Mumbai. Mm. That's, that's the sad part, and that it's, it's yeah. so cruel. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm. But, uh, well, the pavement part of it is just one part of the story. Mm -hmm. uh, I wrote the book because of, in fact, what was happening within me. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, in fact, I have to make a confession. Is mm -hmm. that Yeah. Uh, I found, I, the confession is that I've always found spontaneous prayer difficult. Mm -hmm. um, that's because, and paradoxically, I think it is because of my Catholic up upbringing. Yeah. I mean, we were taught prayers. We were told, learn your prayers. Mm -hmm. So we said our prayers. I said, "My Our Father, Hail Mary, the the grace before and after meals, and the the I confess." So I knew all my prayers. I I got I got prizes at catechism class for 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 knowing all my prayers. So I could mm -hmm. say my prayers, but I couldn't pray. I understand. Yeah. So and uh, I mean, it's it, it's it's uh, a. Uh, I think it's because of my Catholic up upbringing, because, it, I mean, Catholic prayer book is impressive, isn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. you have rosaries, litanies, the family prayer book. Mm -hmm. These contain the magical words that the church puts into my mouth. Pious, theologically sound, nice, neat praying formats. Mm -hmm. But they are not my words. Mm -hmm. They will never express my particular feeling. They do not fit in with what I'm going through at any point any moment mm -hmm. and that's why so now and again you and i have to put the fine prayer books aside and articulate what is in our mind and heart mm -hmm. our prayer then becomes different from that of the prayer books 
or anything that was taught to us by priest or parent. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to admire my cousins uh, who were Protestants because my, my father was a Protestant before he married my mother and became a Catholic. His, relation, his relatives, his, uh, his brothers and sisters and his niece, nephews and nieces were Protestants. And when I used to visit them, I would admire the way they would pray. They would just, mm -hmm. their spontaneous prayer was, was really admirable. I said, why can't we pray like that? Uh, we have to say our, we have to say our prayers, the formula that the church has given us. And because personal prayer I, is not easy. It can be a messy affair. You sit there with your mind full of distractions, trying very hard to, to talk to a God that you cannot see. You're not sure that he's listening. And worse, you're not sure that you're saying the right things. So petition, studied prayer, sanctimoniousness, self-justification, self-pity, self-flagellation, Quarrel, rationalization, all these are the stuff of personal prayer. But they are, uh, they are yours, they are mine, they are sincere, mm -hmm. and they are made of flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. And I believe personal prayer tells a story. The story of my life. So this book, Pavement Prayers, is such a book. It's a novel written in the form of personal prayers of a homeless person called John who lives on the streets of Mumbai. Mm -hmm. But this is the structure of the book. It's a novel. It's a story. It tells of all, all the things that this person John went through, how he got onto the pavement and, and his life there, all told through his prayer. Mm -hmm. So his prayer becomes his his autobiography, intense, mm -hmm. personal, and unpunctuated. So, uh, that's, mm -hmm. so any any questions? Um, and not so much a question, but a comment. I find that uh, distinction you've made very interesting um, about the difference between the prayers that we learn as Catholics. I, I converted as an adult, so there, I was 38, so, um, you know, I learned them late, uh, as opposed to the prayer that wells up from the heart. But, you know, I found um, in one instance, especially, um, the, uh, those prayers are so helpful. We have uh, a hospital maybe four blocks from where I live, Mm -hmm. And we, because it's a rural area, helicopters come back and forth to deliver people to the hospital, like from a car accident. Right. And all I have to, you know how you can hear the beat of the, the blades of the helicopter? Right. It's, it's not even, a, it's, a, it's just the sound of wind moving, I guess. Whenever right. I hear that, since I converted, whenever I hear that, I say a Hail Mary. Because I want that, I, you know, I have no idea what's happened, you know, heart attack or a car accident, but just to entrust this person to Mary's care. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so I think, um, I think you're right that, that it's difficult for many people to pray. It's, it's easier to say the prayers of the church. I'm not saying that's wrong at all. It's not. No. But, it's not uh, wrong. No, yeah. no, no. I mean, it's it's those are tried and true prayers for centuries. But in that one particular instance with me, whenever I hear the helicopter or I hear a siren, you know, I always say a Hail Mary. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it, because you know, you, even though you're just mouthing, you may just be uh, saying these prayers by rote, the mm -hmm. attitude you bring to that prayer yes. is a genuine one. Oh, yes. For instance, yes. when you're saying the rosary, mm -hmm. it's a kind of meditation. Though you, you, may not, mm -hmm. you may not sort of concentrate on each word that you're saying, but mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's like a meditation, a repetition, yeah. Which, yeah. which sort of induces a kind of meditative uh, uh, mm -hmm. state of mind. Mm -hmm. And so it, it was, yeah. I have seen, I mean, in, in the trains, the trains of Bombay, the suburban trains, Mm -hmm. I've seen people saying the rosary 
to the rhythm of the train. Huh. Yeah. You know, and I think it sort of works, you know, your, mm -hmm. your, it, the repetitive rhythm of, of the train mm -hmm. with, the rep, with the repetition of, of the Hail Marys, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it's sort of, it's a kind of meditation that I'm sure works. Mm -hmm. It's also, I, think I, I was here. talking of, I was just talking about, you know, uh, spontaneous prayer, which is delivered mm -hmm. uh, in public. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. I find that a little, uh, I find that a little difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, for instance, if I had to write a prayer and I've written this prayers or book of mm -hmm. prayers, mm -hmm. uh, I find if you write it, if you write your prayer mm -hmm. out every day, Every evening, uh, mm -hmm. for instance, you write your prayer out. I mean, you're praying. You are expressing mm -hmm. yourself to the Lord. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's also, I think, a lot to do with the intention. Um, you know, you can, you can have a spontaneous prayer that's really not um, eloquent. Yes. Um, but God knows what your intention is. Absolutely. You know, and that's, you know, so that's... Uh, that's something we can never forget. And, and that goes also, of course, when we're praying something from the prayer book. He knows our intention. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, I'd like to read one of those prayers. I mean, this, yes. the, and because, yeah, because, um, uh, and because I think personal prayer is, is sort of just gushes out into your, mm -hmm. you know, from your heart. It's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a prayer without punctuation. And so this whole book of prayers is written without punctuation to, to mm -hmm. in fact, to reflect or mimic the structure of personal prayer. I'll mm -hmm. read you one. one okay. In fact, the first, the very first prayer in this book, in fact, the prayers in this book are all written according to the, into the, into the, according to the formula of the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. I, I've read the morning prayer, the grace before meals, the Our Father, the mm -hmm. um, Pirie, the Angelus. So these are the various chapters. And mm -hmm. under these chapters, uh, the, I mean, uh, uh, I, I write the prayer, which tells the story. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll read you the very first chapter, the morning prayer. Mm -hmm. If I may? Sure. It says, the prayer goes, Good morning, my Lord. I confess, I didn't say my morning prayers like my mother had taught me to, but it is not always a nice thing waking up on a pavement, you know, because you don't know what your wake-up call is going to be like, though I have gone through them all, or almost all, for all these street-hardened years of dirty dawns. Oh, yes, I have felt the hard kick of a lazy boot that has blindly tripped on my sleeping body without so much as an apology, and sometimes the hard kick of the boot of some overfed policeman with nothing better to do, and at other times the furtive hand of an apprentice pickpocket getting a little cheap practice on me, and on some mornings the warm trickle of that three-year-old's 5 a.m. relief, or worse, much worse, and no excuses, Lord, but I find it hard to make the sign of the cross on rudely awakened breast at those times. So will you hold it against me, please? Tell me, will you hold it against me? While today, 10 minutes after my wake up call and a slapdash wash at a burst water pipe, I'm crossing the street onto the waterfront where early as it is, a few joggers are working at undoing the venial sins of the belly and old men have gathered to fill in the blanks of their generally vacant days with at least some sunrise sociability. Yes, I see those early morning warm-ups of the city's day, and I marvel, Lord, I marvel at the sense of discipline and purpose of people who seem to have it all. And I wonder if that is why, Lord, you have given them that all, or have they got that all, all by themselves without any help from you because they are so smart and hardworking and such deserving men and women and I wonder, as I stroll against the strong and refreshing breeze which quickly fills my lungs with goodness, and I swallow gulps of this delicious nothingness as if it were going to run out on me, ooh, and ooh, it feels so good to know that it is the same quality of goodness 
that is being lavished on me as on all these other motor car driven big shot big shot joggers and not all their money and influence can buy them anything more or better than what i am being given today thank you lord thank you lord and i ask myself in the mindset of the street set what would these big shot joggers be willing to pay if you lord were selling this invigorating stuff by the cubic centimeter how much would they be willing to buy and would they haggle with you on the price and would they try and beat you down with their studied and much practiced negotiating skills i wonder because i am getting it free by the lungful and you can see it has already cleared my head and scraped off the phlegm from my lungs and from my throat yes and put a string into my spring into my step and a smile on my face and i notice a few joggers and walkers looking at me as if i had no right to look so contented and sprightly and one of them slows down as he approaches me from up from the opposite side and stares at me and squints his eye and as he passes me he turns around and i turn around too getting a look at his face while we continue in our own directions but in that split second of a turned head my mind does a flashback to a face in an office of many years ago which is the face of the walker who walked by only now he doesn't quite look like pandu the peon he was then when i knew him in 19 something something he was pandu the tear boy the tea boy the odd job boy the naughty boy the cute fellow the everybody's boy the anytime boy or the boy who would do anything you wanted for a small tip whether it be to fetch and carry or buy or fix you could depend on pandu the ever willing and clever and resourceful pandu would get it for you be it a railway ticket during the crowded season or a pornographic magazine or yes you could rely on pandu the fellow who everyone said would go far because he was hard working and street smart and enterprising even then as a tea boy when his job was only to distribute the tea for the pantry contractor pandu would spend his own money and stock up on razor blades and chewing gum and batteries because he said these were the things that ran out of, ran out without notice or even things like condoms and aphrodisiacs which the young bachelors felt embarrassed to ask at the chemist and that was all to the good so that pandu could make a small profit on the side oh yes pandu was a smart one and this is the same fellow i see today doing his morning walk in well laundered shorts and t-shirt and nike jogging shoes looking every every inch like one of the big shot car owner joggers and i say to myself as he walks past me that morning that he hasn't recognized me because things have changed so much for him and a lot more for me with life having moved in wildly opposite directions and look how some people have climbed to highest higher and happier stations whilst i lord i have come to this pavement and this day of tattered clothing and battered spirit and this day of the uncertain wake up call and wonder of wonders to this miraculous day when in the sight of the whole world you in your divine power or is it playfulness have chosen to tell me that i am equal to him and him and her and all of them yahu and alleluia my spirit is laughing like a child inside me as i now almost fly with arms outstretched and fingers like palm leaves slicing the cold breeze that sings joyfully joyful hosannas into my ears i run into the to the end of the waterfront where the sea surrounds me on three sides and i face the water for the while keeping the city behind me with all its emotional excrement and the foul breath of crime and inhumanity and opportunism and mindless urgency and before long it does not exist for me i swear the city has vanished completely and it is not there for me oh no it is not there at all and yesterday is swallowed up in the now and i sense the big presence of is it you my lord is it you in that great big expanse of newness between the canopy of blue and the and the dance of the waves below and i am lost in this gust of the sacramental south southwesterly that has braced my spirit to feel that it is you of my childhood catechism i see walking over the waves coming from a distant shore and as you comes nearer i feel that my mind is playing tricks on me for i see you barefooted in tattered jeans with a dirty satchel on your back looking like another city vagrant in fact quite like me 
with your hand outstretched and beckoning me to take a step forward. And I say to myself that I've gone crazy and that those substances I ingested years ago are even now working on me. For you would not even, if you chose to be incarnated today, be part of our pavement gang. Or would you? I ask, would you walk with hand on shoulder with vagabonds and pickpockets and pimps and prostitutes and beggars? And would you sit with us over a shared butt of a discarded cigarette to listen to our tales of bravado of how one outwitted the police and the other picked a challenging pocket in broad daylight and yet another got the better of that patch of slime that tried to pay less for the sexual labors he had come to hire from one of our pavement sisters? Or would you share a meal of leftover roti with the scum of the city? Oh, would you, Lord, who would you? Would you, I ask you, and if you had to do your last supper with us today, what, you, what would you use for bread and wine on your pavement? I wonder, and in my glad delirium, I dare to think of all that mad divinity as a possibility within the fractured theology of the moment. Wow, that's excellent. I really enjoyed that. I think it's, you know, I can imagine someone having those thoughts saying that Some prayer way. yeah i could imagine sure. someone saying that prayer yeah you know it's and, and so uh, uh, i mean in this manner the prayers based on the on the path on the our father mm -hmm. on the on the on, the, on the, i confess and mm -hmm. each, but each one telling a story yeah yeah continuing, really... continuing the story of his life yeah excellent so so you've observed a lot in your life to be able to uh, to be able to write like that about someone's someone who's so unfortunate so well. Yeah, we spoke to them. We said my wife and I used to to sort of stop at the pavements and and speak to them, you know, as if they were mm -hmm. friends. And mm -hmm. passers by would wonder what we were doing, you know, speaking to mm -hmm. these people. Many of them were were leprosy patients uh, who my uh, and my my wife, wife Ingrid did uh, used to work in the slums with the with the leprosy people mm -hmm. uh, leprosy patients so some of them would come to the city to beg mm -hmm. so uh, that you know that is it and so we we spoke to them and that's why uh, we got a lot of stuff from them mm -hmm. yeah that's that's really obvious that that is not something that a person could write unless he knew how these people live and how they think. Yeah. You know, you'd, you'd fall flat. If I tried to write something like that, it would never come out like that. It's, it's uh, really impressive that you have um, that kind of communication with people and can help them through this book, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what else? I mean. Mm -hmm. um, well, is there, uh, what is, what's your next writing project after these, these first two that I've, I've interviewed you on? I'm sure you're continuing to write. Oh, yes. I, I've almost written, uh, completed something, but mm -hmm. uh, well, I, Hope to be able to present it uh, soon. Uh, I've written, yeah, a, a couple of things more, but uh, I'm hoping that uh, the the sequel to this one, which is Saint Lakshmi. Mm -hmm. Yes, I so, remember that. Uh, which you, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. which you interviewed me for, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah. So the okay, so yeah. So the third one will be a continuation or uh, something very different. No, something very different, really. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you? Is this may a personal prayer be a story with a happy ever after? Mm -hmm. uh, I see. Yeah, uh, I think I've lost my. No. Yes, okay. I've got it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So, um, to me, when I, when I hear you read that, or when I read something like that, I think that, um, people who read, um, that kind of writing, it may change their heart to give to people who need help. You know, if, I hope they, they, yeah. Yeah. I hope if they think about what's going on inside another human being, that's just as human as them has the same hopes right. and, you know, wishes and although more problems, um, you know, I, th I hope that that will open people's hearts. You know, because in, uh, I'm hoping for two things, because in, 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 in Mumbai especially, you know, your, our, our feelings get so dulled. You see so many of these yeah. beggars. And yeah. you know that many of them are designed, you, you become hard, you sort of just mm -hmm. ignore them. Mm -hmm. But uh, reading something like this might help to to get people to empathize yeah. with with people like uh, like like John and mm -hmm. uh, you know like Grace or mm -hmm. uh, these people that that we have spoken to and we've met. They are yeah. they are on the on the streets. They are mm -hmm. suffering. Uh, yeah. uh, but uh, people people's uh, hearts are hardened towards them because they see so much of it. Yeah. And the yeah. other thing is I, I, I hope that uh, the book will, be, will help in some way to, uh, to uh, people to do their personal prayer, maybe even write their personal prayer. I would mm -hmm. encourage people to write pers their personal prayer in, uh, every day. And, mm -hmm. and I think it would come out, uh, uh, it would, it, it, they would be happy with their own prayer if it's mm -hmm. written. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I think uh, you may be right. Um, as long as we don't spend too much time on proper grammar and, and punctuation. Yeah. yeah no, it's yeah. more of a, a stream as opposed to something yeah, written correctly. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I've often thought, um, I mean, here, like in New York, the bigger cities um, and some of the smaller cities, too, you do see people who are desperate um, and a lot of them. But I think one of the things that affects people that can help them is, you know, it is so overwhelming. If you walk through some of the slums, um, it's overwhelming. I mean, how do you choose one to help? You know, and I think we harden, we get hard because of that, you know, to protect. I think people try to protect themselves from the pain they see because they yeah. don't know how to address it. And I think yeah. that book yeah. might help. True. I hope it does. Yeah. I do too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, was there anything else you wanted to emphasize? No, unless there's no nothing else. Let's. Uh, okay. Um, well, I hope this book, together with uh, Saint Lakshmi, mm -hmm. will kind of help people. Yes. Yeah. You never know. You know what? We never know the good we do. Um, you know, someone may pick up those books and read them and have um, a, a tremendous impact. So, I hope that happens. So. Um, okay, so would you like to uh, close us in prayer? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I thank you, uh, Holy Spirit, for being with us today, for being with Cynthia and with me. You have helped us through the session. We hope that the session and the book, Pavement Prayers, be an instrument of your peace. This we ask in all humility, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, keep up the good work. And uh, I'll, I'll try. see you again. Yes, <laughs> I'll see you again when you finish the next book. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you take care. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Bye-bye.
Bye.